Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the match review of Chelsea's, quite frankly, weird game against Bournemouth away in the Premier League that <laughs> finished 2-2. Now, positives, negatives. Bournemouth always seem to rally against Chelsea, whether it's winning in the reverse fixture or remember last season under Maurizio Sarri, Bournemouth absolutely punished Chelsea 4-0 in the same fixture. So I guess they're somewhat of a bogey team in many ways, but this game was peculiar. Chelsea went with a 3-4-3 again, which is when I, I guess reflected on it, I thought it was a good idea. Frank Lampard changed it when he had to, as if Tomori came in, people were calling for that, he was pretty darn bad. And Bournemouth took their chances, well maybe not in the first half, certainly in the second half, game of two halves. So we're going to get into all of that today, it's a lot to talk about, but before we do, a quick reminder to you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new to the channel, please do sub, hit that bell notifications icon because that is important, why not like the video to help me out man, and come follow me on Instagram at Football Yannick. Alright, let's get into this review. Right, this game was officially a ding dong and shouldn't have been. <laughs> Oh my god, right, I'm going to pull up the who scored match centre in front of me now so you can take a look at the lineups and who scored. Boom. Right, as you can see, 3-4-3 three, three from Frank Lampard to Chelsea, a 4-3-3, three, three, which basically was a 4-5-1 from Bournemouth. Goals from Jefferson Lernema from a corner, um, or Josh King as well got a goal. Marcus Alonso with a brace. My goodness. And as you can see on the stats here, complete and utter domination from Chelsea. Over 73% possession, uh, 23 shots, 87% pass success. Interestingly, Bournemouth completed more dribbles, but Chelsea dominated and pretty much everything else. We're still waiting to see that substitute appearance from Ruben Loftus-Cheek, but I keep thinking that's going to come when Chelsea are two goals ahead and he can settle into a game rather than throwing him on. So we saw substitute appearances for Willian, Ross Barkley and Mishy Batshuayi. Batshuayi... Oh god, let... Okay. Before I talk about player performances, let's talk about where this leaves us. So prior to the game, Leicester dropped points yesterday to Norwich City, losing, which is kind of like a mental result. And a win today would have seen Chelsea get really, really close to the Foxes, but as it stands, they only claw a point back. Now, Chelsea started really, really poorly in this game. Billing had two chances to score in the first half and the second chance was an absolute sitter he had time to place it and he just basically scuffs it caballero did make a few goals but generally he wasn't great whereas on the other side of the pitch ramsdale was excellent alonso gets the goal in the first half and chelsea are will feel frustrated as per usual that they did not score more goals in a sort of segment of dominance in the game because chelsea really were by far the best team in that in that half after the first opening few minutes they grew into it and they absolutely dominated same story applies all the domination they don't finish their chances they got in a lot of shooting positions a lot of uh, big chances created but like i said finishing man it's just finishing so in that defensively overall chelsea were pretty poor obviously they conceded on a set piece in the second half which is just getting tiring now and everyone was calling for for Kaio Tomori to come back in including myself which he did for Antonio Rudiger who had been poor lately so that's all good that's what people wanted right so people got what they wanted whether it's because he's not sharp but he was really poor and he actually ends up getting substituted so Frank Lampard can change the system to a 4-3-3 now <laughs> He brings on Ross Barkley. I understand Barkley understands his ideas, he's physical, he's strong. He does actually do sensible things in terms of releasing the ball sometimes, but he's just been frustrating of late. And Willian, man, I, I, he's not this clutch player anymore, or very rarely, one every like 20 games, he's going to do an amazing performance, and usually that's when he starts. So him off the bench wasn't doing much. Really, I felt sorry for Giroud. I think he probably came off for Batshuayi because he was gassed out. He had uh, like quite a lot to do with the first goal, um, but he, the game was passing him by a little bit. Now, I don't blame Giroud for that. I just think it's the type of possession style Chelsea play. He's really good on the counter-attack Giroud when he's combining with a number 10, but in this instance, he was good at the beginning but he faded. Batshuayi is just the most infuriating player. That, off, that goal that he scored that was clearly offside before the... Uh, you know the linesman flagged the whistle blew I knew he was offside he scored with his left foot I think he's a really good excellent two-footed finisher but I just knew he was offside and 
it just doesn't do it for me, man. Marcus Alonso scored his second. He got his brace. In the space of a week, man, in the space of a week, Marcus Alonso scored the winner in a London derby. Superb. Got sent off against Bayern Munich in the Champions League and then scored a Premier League brace a few days later. What a week for the Spaniard. Now, I do maintain that Alonso, he was playing left back for the second half of this game. I mean, Bournemouth were camped in, so you can afford you can like afford to have a left back like Marcus Alonso, but obviously we all know he can't defend. Anyway, kudos to him. He earned Chelsea a point in this game. He actually nearly had himself a hat trick, would have just which would have just been hilarious. And really, the goal Bournemouth goalkeeper played a really good game, made some saves, uh, kept Bournemouth in it. But it's the same old story, man. Bournemouth did play very well in spells, very well, like in superb combinations. But the point is, they shouldn't have been allowed, they shouldn't have been afforded the opportunity to come into the game and play well. That first half, when Chelsea grew into the game and imposed themselves on the opposition, that's really when you should be scoring the second, the third. Do you know what I mean? I do sympathise, I mean, you can critique Lampard, I don't know what else he would have had on the bench. Um, I mean, he started Giroud, he started Tomori, he started the 3-4-3. I think after the reverse fixture, I think a lot of people will... This is pretty much what everyone wanted, what he did in this game. Um, I mean, maybe start... Maybe start William, but then again, Pedro did, played all right, didn't he? Pedro did actually play quite well, so... I don't really, I don't really know what more Frank Lampard could have done in this game. I understand why he switched formations in terms of assessing the reverse fixture. And he did try and change it, and he looked to his bench. So, I, I don't know, finishing new players. I mean, we all know Chelsea, this Chelsea, is a very, very poor Chelsea football club in terms of the squad quality. But I, don't know, I just really don't know what to make of it. I'm so lost. Let's be real. If Chelsea's this Chelsea's full strength squad, it probably would. He probably would have started in Golo Kante because it's a 3 4 3. And in a 3 4 3, Kante is very, very good. It's the Antonio Conte lineup, isn't it? The two in midfield. So Kante would have started. Pulisic would have started. Who knows? Maybe Ruben Loftus Cheek might be playing next to Kante in this game because they need more attacking prowess. It's three players already that you feel like should be starting. Uh, they were all out of the lineup, difference makers, if you will. None of those players were available. So I kind of look at this game and I think about those absentees who are absolutely massive in terms of you know changing the game. Really disappointing to concede on a set piece. I, uh, I think Caballero can do better. He gets his hand to it. I know he's been a little bit better than Kepa, but God, it's not saying much, is it? Second goal by King, sort of fair enough. I don't know. It's disappointing to concede off a set piece, but in terms of the other end and all that domination I showed you on the stats, I think Chelsea should just be putting it away. They need to convert these chances. Um, they need some new forwards, man, you know? <laughs> Player performances, Caballero, average, felt like he should have done a bit better. Marcus Alonso, very, very good. Um, he put, not only did he score the brace to earn Chelsea the point, he actually put a decent cut back in. He nearly got a hat trick, so probably my man of the match. The midfield duo, I think Jorginho was a bit disappointing for me. Since the last two games against Bayern and uh, Bournemouth, I think he's been poor. Um, I'm like, I'm not particularly like a Jorginho sympathizer, but I think he's a very good player and he is like a leader on the pitch, but his form has dropped. Um, and Kovacic was very good, I think, in this game. He was the better out of the two, and he has he was the only decent player on the pitch against Bayern Munich Kovacic, so his form remains good. Jorginho, disappointing. Rhys James, first half, majority put in really poor crosses, uh, and then he just woke up and started doing really good delivery, so Rhys James did very well. Giroud did okay, I think he got gassed later. Pedro did okay, he made some good runs. Good combinations. Mount was all right as well. Um, maybe just we lacked a little bit of that physicality in the final third. To be honest, we just sort of lacked that one attacking central midfielder and that one wide forward that would have made the difference in this game. You know, turned the screw in the first half, killed it off, and then Bournemouth don't have this rallying cry in the second half when they think they're so close and in the game because they're not. Shout out to Bournemouth though. They're in a very difficult spot at the moment and they played some good football and they show they can do it. Ryan Frazier was woken up for like the first time this season apparently. Obviously I think he got the same amount of assists as Hazard last season or one less. He's a superb player and did a few good bits in this game. I think he actually took the corner that they scored with so he got the assist. But you know it leaves Chelsea in a difficult position again. This is a game they should have won in my opinion. Um, you know, obviously they call, clawed a point back closer to Leicester, but you've got the likes of Tottenham uh, playing, uh, was it Tottenham and Everton or was it United Everton? No, Tottenham play Wolves and United play Everton. Both of those teams could drop points. Maybe they could just draw as well. You don't know. 
But like I said, it leaves Chelsea in a delicate position. Anyway, what do you guys think of this game? What's the problem here? Is it the goalkeeper? I think largely it's the goalkeeper. Tomori, I think, was very poor in this game, personally. Um, you know, the commentators were talking about his performance as well. And again, this sharp, pointy end of the pitch not scoring goals, do you know what I mean? Like I said, Jorginho disappointed me in this game. But I want to hear your thoughts. Get down in the comment section below. Express your thoughts and opinions on this game. And also, if you've enjoyed this content, guy, why not like the video? It helps me out a lot. Remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you are indeed new to the channel. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That's it from me, guys. If you can, go and enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.